This series of modules will provide an overview of fetal lung fluid, including a review of the mechanisms of manufacture and clearance of fetal lung fluid, and a brief discussion of neonatal pulmonary pathophysiology attributed to abnormal fetal lung fluid clearance. Module 1 will focus on the composition and secretion of fetal lung fluid. By the end of the first module, the learner will be able to discuss the mechanism of secretion and composition of fetal lung fluid. A series of discoveries in the mid-20th century changed the belief that fetal lung fluid was simply aspirated amniotic fluid. The first discovery was unintentional. While ligating fetal rabbit tracheas to investigate the development of the pituitary adrenal axis, Jost and Policar discovered that the fetal lungs were distended with fluid. Moving to the 1960s, Adams, Fujiwara, and Roshan learned that the fetal lung fluid in the lamb had a markedly higher chloride iron concentration than that of the plasma or amniotic fluid. And finally, in the early 1990s, McRae, Betancourt, and Batasky postulated that fetal lung fluid production by the epithelial cells in the acinar tubulars may begin as early as the six week of gestation when they used a human fetal lung tissue culture model. Following the work by Adams and others, Several groups contributed to the understanding of the mechanism of fetal lung secretion by type 1 and type 2 epithelial cells. These groups found that the sodium-potassium ATPase pumps, located basolaterally in the respiratory epithelial cells, force out three sodium molecules in exchange for two potassium molecules, creating a tenfold electrochemical gradient between the intracellular and extracellular fluid. This electrochemical gradient is further increased by basolateral potassium channels that pump additional positive ions out of the cell. The electrochemical gradient pulls positively charged sodium molecules back into the epithelial cell through the potassium-sodium chloride transporter, accompanied by chloride and potassium molecules. The chloride is transported into the epithelial cell by the potassium-sodium chloride transporter and is now driven out of the epithelial cell on the apical side through anion selective channels. The active transport of chloride occurs against its concentrating gradient because the existing negative intracellular potential leads to an electric force enabling its movement into the airway lumen. Sodium molecules and water follow the chloride, moving paracellularly between the epithelial cells or through aquaporins. Moving back to the late 1960s, Adamson and colleagues examined the composition of fetal lamb lung fluid. They confirmed the earlier finding of markedly elevated levels of chloride in the lumen of the fetal lung, while also demonstrating a marked decrease in pH and bicarbonate. Some postulate that the acid pH may help to activate chloride channels, but this has not been proven. What is notable is that the concentration of sodium and chloride is markedly different in the fetal lung fluid and amniotic fluid further confirming that the lung fluid is simply not just swallowed amniotic fluid. Fetal lung fluid significantly influences lung growth. Proper development of the lung is dependent on the presence of both fetal lung fluid and amniotic fluid. Fetal lung fluid is maintained within the developing lung by resistance at the laryngeal level, primarily the glottis. The upper airway acts like a gatekeeper by controlling the resistance to efflux of fluid out of the lung during non-breathing periods. This fluid maintains an airway volume that is similar to the functional residual capacity and equals about 20 to 30 milliliters per kilo at term gestation. Fetal lung fluid also maintains a distending pressure of 1 to 2 millimeters of mercury, which keeps the fetal lung open and is vital for lung growth. Experimental drainage, or decrease in formation of fetal lung fluid in animal models, leads to pulmonary hypoplasia. The fetal lung chest wall is compliant and does not compromise pulmonary development in healthy fetuses. The fetal lung is believed to secrete approximately 100 times more fluid than is needed to expand the lungs for growth. Although the larynx restricts the efflux of fetal lung fluid, the glottis dilates with fetal breathing movements and does allow some fetal lung fluid to exit. Half of the fluid that exits the trachea is swallowed by the fetus, and the other half enters the amniotic fluid compartment. The mixing of the fetal lung efflux with the amniotic fluid has allowed evaluation of fetal lung maturity with screening tests such as the shake test and the lecithin sphingomyelin ratio. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program.
This concludes this module.